Aralek, Intel's promising new launch, seems to have let gamers down. But here's why it's not that simple. While gaming performance on the 285K seems to fall behind its predecessor and also the 7800X3D in gaming, with 9000X3D literally right around the corner, it's not all bad news for Intel. And in my opinion, Aralek isn't as bad as it seems. And before you get the pitchforks ready, because you think I'm defending Intel, let me just explain. There's no doubt that Intel's had a rough time recently, with Raptor Lake being hit with bugs, and Aralek isn't immune either. But there's more story than just the benchmarks and blue screens. Aralek was essentially built from the ground up, with Intel's instability and previous issues in mind. The focus was completely on resetting the CPU lineup and reducing power consumption, thus massively improving efficiency. The regression in max turbo frequency on the 14900K, going from 5.8GHz to 5.7GHz on the 285K, should immediately tell you that their focus is hinging on efficiency this time around. This is combined with their emphasis on power per area with the removal of hyperthreading, as well as the introduction of DLVR or digital linear voltage regulators. And you can definitely tell that their priority overall was improving overall efficiency without sacrificing performance. What I thought was impressive about Aralek straight away was that even despite the removal of hyperthreading going from 32 threads down to 24 threads, it was able to improve multi-threading performance by upwards of 8% in Cinemanch R24. The resulting power consumption decreased by 16% versus the 14900K, in multi-threading. In gaming, Aralek moves away from raw performance, dropping by a mere 5% on average compared to the 14900K, but at the same time, drops power consumption by 37% in gaming compared to the 14900K. That said, Intel could have easily introduced another Raptor Lake refresh or a new architecture released on their previous Intel 7 or Intel 10 nanometer enhanced superfin and brute force performance, but that would have significantly increased power consumption. While it might have brought them closer to AMD's X3D, it simply would not have been worth it. And overall, Aralee couldn't have been the jack of all trades. Intel couldn't be the absolute performance leader while simultaneously regaining efficiency leads and introducing a plethora of other features. It just couldn't happen. They had to prioritize somewhere, otherwise Aralee wouldn't even deliver on its sole goal of improving efficiency instead of being worse in all aspects. They needed a balanced approach to prioritizing efficiency to prepare for future competition. Further software optimization could very well improve performance overall especially in gaming. But what do you think? Should Intel have focused more on gaming performance? Let me know down below in the comments. But there's obviously more to this story, which relates to Intel's priority in their shift to a disaggregated design. While it might not be the first tile-based CPU from Intel, it's certainly the first one to come to desktop, which brings with it new challenges separating itself from mobile counterparts. Yes, they've had Media Lake and recently Lunar Lake, but this is Intel's first tile-based CPU to come to the desktop. The days of simply improving a process node or core architecture on a monolithic die are over, requiring a whole host of new considerations, including tight-knit underlying software tweaking and optimization to ensure the best performance from the hardware. Combined with the P&E core architectures, each new generation will require sophisticated scheduling. That's not to mention the fact that it's now a heterogeneous design that Intel has to juggle with, with the GPU tile, SOC tile, the compute tile, the IO tile, in addition to their existing P and E core CPU design. And even in addition to that, they've changed the compute tile to be a staggered approach to the core layout, with the E cores situated in between the P cores likely for better heat distribution and management, considering the fact that the compute tile is no longer in the center of the die. And this might very well have caused scheduling issues resulting in massive performance. One user noting when pairing with Windows 24H2 with Arrow Lake, performance will be terrible. We're seeing games running at 50% of the FPS versus 23H2, the previous version. One solution is to turn off Thread Director or disable the balanced power profile which is why we decided to use 23H2 for the time of testing. A user over on X called Young514613 also saw improvements of almost 12% in Cyberpunk and 22% in Diablo by, get this, disabling all but one P-Core with all of the 16 E-Cores enabled on the 285K. 
However, take this with a grain of salt, as this is purely speculation. When we get these CPUs in for testing, we will find this out for ourselves, but stay tuned until then. But this doesn't sway away from Intel's focus here. As mentioned before, their focus wasn't solely on gaming to begin with. They had a lot on their plate. A completely new platform with two new architectures, Lion Cove and Skymon, a new staggered core layout, a heterogeneous design, while simultaneously utilizing external foundries for all their tiles, and with a focus focus on power efficiency. Overall, that's going to be bound to create some teething issues, as even AMD doesn't shy away from these kinds of issues too. Recent launches from AMD with Zen 5 have also suffered from issues with core-to-core -core latency between the dual CCDs, resulting in performance losses requiring BIOS and firmware updates. Their X3D parts have also suffered from core parking issues and latency issues as well, requiring solutions as well. This means that it's not exclusive to Intel right now, with AMD facing similar challenges as a result of the entire industry's direction due to the limitations with silicon. As mentioned, the focus is no longer on a simple monolithic die with a new lithography and a single core architecture design. Both AMD and Intel have to deal with the struggles of heterogeneous multi-die complexes, necessitating the need for tight-knit software optimization. AMD and now Intel have to rely on Microsoft to ensure their Windows schedule operates according to the needs of the processors, negating core latency, parking, and scheduling issues whenever a new processor is released, something that never used to be the case before. Overall, Intel has a lot to learn. Their new release drawing parallels to AMD's Zen original launch back in 2017. AMD's original Zen launch struggled with issues and stability, requiring several firmware and OS updates to unlock its full potential, especially with the introduction of a chiplet-based design with Infinity Fabric on Zen 2 in 2019. That said, Intel is about to face the wrath of AMD, given the upcoming 9000X3D CPUs expected to bring uplifts through enhanced 3D vCache designs. AMD even incorporating the 3D vCache underneath the 8-core CCD and likely the 9800X3D, expected to bring major improvements to both performance and thermals, leading to higher voltages and increased clocks. And reports indicate an 8% higher gaming performance and a 15% higher multi-threading performance, which is purely speculative, of course. This means that AMD might very well steal Intel's thunder, but once again this doesn't undermine Arrow Lake. In its current state, it might be the arrow in the knee lake that everyone talks about, but it's a necessary step for Intel resetting their platform. Future optimizations with Windows updates and microcode could potentially improve gaming performance. And while you shouldn't buy a product based on its future promises, don't judge Arrow Lake simply by its day one benchmarks. Patience could very well pay off as software and platforms improve, which is something we very much saw with Zen 5. And gaming isn't the only workload that matters. There's a shift towards efficiency benefits with more diverse workloads such as content creation and AI tasks. And early demand for the Ultra 200 series shows that many users care more about power efficiency and multi-threading performance, with retailers starting to sell these CPUs out quickly, although supply was pretty low to begin with, so make of that what you will. So overall, Intel's Arrow Lake isn't a failure. It's a strategic reset that focuses on power efficiency and lays the foundation for future gaming improvements. Both Intel and AMD are navigating the complexities of new architectures and designs, facing similar challenges that require time and optimization to overcome. But remember guys, competition drives innovation, and with AMD's 9000X3D around the corner, Intel will likely introduce performance optimizations or refreshes soon to keep up. So what do you think? Can Intel catch up to AMD, or will the 9000X3D leave them in the dust? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyways guys, that's all for today. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also make sure to click this video on the screen right now.